Hey, aloha, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii Studio for another. Uh, this is going to be an exciting episode of Security Matters. Chad Cooper's with us today. Um, many of you may know him from Motorola fame. Um, most of you may know of him from CCTV fame. Uh, I think uh, we're going to bring some some um, industry perspective to you, uh, not to not to malign bad installation or anything like that, but just to point out the fact that things things get done for a lot of different reasons and. Um, I, I, I'm so looking forward to, to this discussion. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to it. Chad, thanks for taking time out of your schedule to join me. I know you um, have a real job. You don't just spend all your time, you know, scouring the world for bad installations. <laughs> no, you know, they are uh, somewhat easy to find. So uh, I thank you for uh, having me on the show today, Andrew. It's, uh, it's great. It's going to well, be Well, welcome. Um, let's go ahead and uh, give our audience a few minutes. Many, uh, you've been around a long time. A lot of folks know you, but give our audience uh, some sense of your history with the industry and uh, how you, um, how you, maybe how you happened on the CCTV field and uh, take us through it. So I've been in uh, the security industry for about 35 years, uh, doing different roles throughout my time here, everything from distribution to manufacturing, uh, you know, from access control to closed circuit video. And in the last 12 years or so, I, uh, I've found a pretty good niche uh, doing architects, uh, engineers, and security consultant uh, help and support for Motorola solutions uh, as of last year. So I've been here for the last uh, three years now, and everything is great. That's awesome. Yeah, I expect um, Motorola. I think doing a lot of stuff in smart city work. Are you um, are you seeing a, a trend there for Motorola? Which they've been uh, in Hawaii at least. They're really heavy in the uh, telecom space, right? With our uh, first responders, and so I thought it was sort of a natural fit when they brought a Vigilant on board for them to work on the smart city solution because they're kind of embedded in a lot of those government organizations. It, or do you work on that work? Or are you more with the, just the consultants trying to help them do design? I'm pretty much with the consultants helping them do design. Um, writing specifications and that type of thing to get the Vigilon and the Motorola name brand into those uh, those specif those specs that are hitting the streets. Some of it is for public works. Some of it is private. It doesn't really uh, matter on that side. Yeah, nice to have a big big name like Motorola behind you. Um, so uh, we we were kicking around just before we came on screen the um, this idea of best practices. Um, you know, the, the industry, by and large, knows how to do what it does, um, and um, CCTV Fails has found a, 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 a bit of a niche, I think, to tell us sort of what not to do. Um, how, how, um, t tell us how, how you got involved with uh, getting these images out and sort of, I, I think it's like a necessary service, personally, um, but t take us through the, the evolution of CCTV Fails. You know, really, the evolution, it was... Uh, is a pretty simple uh, thing. A friend of mine, a good friend of mine, that was a consultant at the time. He uh, he was posting the the spaghetti, the the network spaghetti pictures that nah. showed the back of the network <laughs> closets that were a total mess. And I thought that those were very interesting. And I really looked at it, saying, you know, uh, that I think that our industry could really benefit from somebody showing some of the fails for CCTV. TV. And getting those out there has been a, uh, you know, a, a tremendous boost for, you know, my, uh, myself to show that, uh, you know, that I have, you know, lots of comments about them, but also connecting my network and my community on LinkedIn, in regards to those type of, uh, those type of pictures and those type of conversations that are going on in the background. So, Bringing some humor to our industry is part of it also, is uh, some sarcastic humor, I guess, that, uh, you know, really shows, you know, worst case scenarios of what's going on out there. And I think that as products in our industry have become more commoditized, there's a lot more do-it-yourselfers out there. And in doing that, you end up with a lot of poorly installed systems. Yeah, like just like those um some of those network closets you see, you know the the self the self made IT, IT guy right can make an absolute mess. I walked into a few of those. Um, yeah. 
So the from a, you know it's interesting. I didn't think about the DIY perspective, the um, the do it yourself perspective. I always when I see these images when you post them, I always think like just what company could allow that, right? And and um, I, I I know that you know maybe a guy gets in a bind somewhere. He's you know had to drive twenty hours to do something. He's got to get it done in the next two hours and doesn't have what he needs, right? The whole the whole MacGyver approach they call that out in Hawaii. I don't know, but. In, it just is, if you could give it a number, just off the top of your head, how, how many of the installations that you come across are just, let's just say an A grade, you know, 90% or better, just that, they're just that good. Because I feel like our industry does a good job. I think our industry does do a, a, a relatively good job, but I also think that there's a long ways to go in training. And I think mm. that a lot of companies are not investing enough money into their people to get them trained to do it the right way, not to take shortcuts, to really take a look at the finer details because a good system, as you know, from your installation you know, side of your company, a good installation comes down to those fine details. You know, is it a, you know, is it a, all the way down to just wire tying and wrapping your, your network cables? How is that done? Is that, you know, neat and clean? terminations. There's a lot of small details that go into place. And if you don't train your people, you're going to end up on CCTV fail. <laughs> I love it. The, uh, it's interesting, you know, you go from, and we, we, um, cause we're sort of DOD and have that, that four tiered structure. We have like that apprentice level, then you get your journeyman level and your master level. And it's super obvious when you see a master level installation of just about anything versus even a journeyman who can get there and four or five years, but maybe get stuck doing some things he's not used to. And then the apprentice who, you know, his, his labels are not the same distance, you know, they're not one inch from the end or what, they're all over the place. And uh, my quality control manager goes nuts when he sees this. He, he's, um, he's like the IST fails guy. So he takes pictures of all that stuff and then brings it in and they do lessons learned and critiques and all that stuff. Um, I have to believe that um, the, the stuff that you do with CCTV fails ends up in a lot of training rooms. Um, for people to, you know, as an example of things not to do. Um, do you get that kind of commentary out of the industry or, or what do people say, um, you know, when you post this stuff? I see a lot of the jokes, but there's some serious side to it that needs to be talked about. Yeah, there is a lot of jokes that are, that are you know, set on each one. <laughs> I've got a couple of commenters that, you know, they're quite quick with the, uh, with the comebacks. Uh, from, from, from the perspective of them being used in training uh, rooms, I've only actually seen a couple different companies that have actually used some of them and they've actually asked me if I can, if they can use my uh, you know my photos in those room right. in those uh, in those training sessions but I haven't seen anything in a major way and I think that that's uh, you know it's kind of a shame that I haven't uh, you know had that type of exposure yet but I think that they will soon you know fall into that realm. Yeah, I, I know our, our QC manager had one and he, he brought it. He said, look, guys, I know I know which one of you did this. And so our, it wasn't uh, it wasn't ours, but our guys are looking around. He said, like, what? Like everybody, somebody's going to get, um, you know, their hat handed to him. You know what I mean? And he just just to get their attention, you know, to get things started. It was really funny. Um, let's I was I'm, I want to get to let's get a few of these to keep our audience is probably sitting there waiting. Eric, can you give us number 10 and let's uh, see where we go from that one. Yeah, so this one is a is a pretty simplistic one, actually. You know, I tried to start off uh, easy on everyone here, but this is a you know th this is a dummy camera on the top of the building, <laughs> and you know that's just the beginning of the fail here because really the wiring side comes over the uh, the 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 roof of the building. I don't know where the penetration went to get inside the building, yeah. but I assume that it's on the on the roof side, which would be a failure also. And then, um, and then it comes down, and there's no drip loop, there's no conduit, there's nothing, and it goes right into that other camera. So, you know, we have a we have a lot of weather issues in, in the fail in the in the fail scheme of what's going on. Yeah, that's one that um, I I unfortunately you see it a lot, you know, and I, I wouldn't I didn't even notice that that was like a dummy camera on the top. So the guy probably figured out that that's uh, I think there's a lot of bi liability issues. Uh, with, with, you know, using dummy cameras. I know that it seems like when I got in the industry 25 years ago, there was a, there were people that sold like just a housing 
um, as if as if a dummy camera was a good idea. And I think then there were some then lawsuits uh, where a false sense of security had been provided to employees who uh, got in some trouble and um, or got in, you know, had a, a violent incident occur to them. Um, and so is uh, that my understanding today is that false cameras uh, are, are, you know, fake cameras are, are basically a liability concern, especially for a business. I agree. And but I have seen and I still continue to see a lot of those in the retail pharmacy side. Wow. Uh, it's a uh, it's amazing, actually, how many that I act, run into. Mm. And at the price of cameras, I mean, why why a dummy? Why don't you get some real data? You know, it's interesting. Uh, and then the the weather proofing, right? That's a obviously sort of a probably a DIY or the, maybe the business owner ran his maintenance guy out there. Hey, go hang this camera, right? <laughs> you could tell yeah. no no familiarity with cabling. Um, do you see a lot of weather exposure issues? I mean, I see them all around town here. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of weather exposure issues, and it could be anything from, you know, the wrong cabling run that you know we know it's going to fill with water and cause shorts and other problems to, uh, you know, to the, the, to the weather drip loop is a, is a special one that I, can't, I see on a consistent basis. Installers mm -hmm. or the people that are doing these, they just don't understand what they're getting into and getting water back running into the building. Yeah. Um, do you see many, I don't know if we'll have any of these, but um, I don't know if they just go cheap or what happens, but I also see indoor cameras outside just, you know, little domes just full of water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, I have a really good one here on that. Oh, okay. Awesome. Awesome. I think, I think um, we call them in the industry fish bowls. Fish bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Eric, let's see uh, number nine, sir. So this one's a little oh, bit, might wow. be a little bit hard to see, but this is Ivy that's growing <laughs> up over the top of some sort of a vine growing up uh, on top of uh, all of this. And so, and completely covering that camera. Now, we didn't see this camera during the during the summertime in the fall because it was totally engulfed in uh, in foliage. But once oh. once that all fell off in the winter time, oh hey, there's a camera up there! Wow, wow! So this camera was it, totally covered. Yeah, I mean it can't be in use, right? It must it must have been abandoned. What I think, or no one's looked at the video in forever. <laughs> Well, you'd be surprised at how many times that I've gone into live systems and the cameras are pointing at the walls. The operators, you know, their pan tilt zoom set at home position to look at a wall. Wow. And they don't understand that they can move that camera and reset that home position and have actual usable video. Wow. I did an airport that there was uh, 35 of them that way. Wow. Is the... Um... Is the consultant community um, attuned to, you know, installation standards? I'm sure once you get done with them, you know, you're like, hey, um, you know, this is the kind of companies we're looking for. But do you have to uh, teach some of this to consultants who may not be that familiar? Maybe they're, they're more architecturally focused than they are uh, installation focused? Well, I think where, where we start to see some of the consultants are, you know, laying the field of view on the actual drawings. And okay, good. Revit and... BIM models are really, you know, because you can take and look at a live view, a 3D live view in Revit, and that will really give you at least, uh, you know, pillars that are in the way and how the camera's angled and what it's kind of be going to be looking at. So it gives you quite a bit of information. But the consultants are, you know, putting that field of view on their drawings. It gives us a much better understanding and the installer as to what they're thinking about for that field of view. Yeah, I love it when it's provided. I've, I've, you know, had technicians that had to go back two or three times. And then the customers, you know, the, the consultant's conversation with the client, the client's sort of real view, what he wanted to see sort of changed. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, well, yeah. well I, have to, I have to maybe relocate that camera to get that field of view or whatever. So that's, that does happen. But I like it when they at least take a shot at first, you know, and then, you, right. know, you, you kind of know what you're building to. It helps the installer. And now when you're looking at, um, you know, multi-lens cameras inside of a single position, I mean, they can be pointed at anywhere. And until you get that sign off for the, uh, from the end user as to what they want to see, you know, the consultant should be at least attempting to put that field of view on. And that can help expose some of the problems uh, later on as to what they might be seeing, whether it's a tree or, you know, bushes or anything of that nature. Awesome. All right. Perfect. Well, we are, let's see, we're about midway through. We're going to take a break and we're going to pay some bills. We'll be back in one minute with Chad Cooper.
Hey, aloha. Welcome back to Security Matters. We're with Chad Cooper today of Motorola and CCTV Fails. We're just looking at, you know, some of these possibilities of things that can happen out there. Maybe give you, maybe you can learn a few things from the why. Um, maybe you can learn the not how. But anyway, uh, Chad, thanks for sharing with us today. I appreciate you being here. Uh, we had gotten our way through a first few. I think we're down to number eight. Eric, if you could show us number eight. So this post oh. was actually not a CCTV fail so much, <laughs> even though that there is CCTV equipment that's in this uh, this control box. But if you happen to notice the, uh, it's about a six or seven foot snake that's inside this box. It actually got the most likes out of probably all of my posts. Now, wow. I don't know if that's just a uh, emotional response to uh, to people not liking snakes, but this leads you to not only our weather issues but other openings that are left open allow you know critters to come in whether they're you know rodents and chewing on wires to snakes like this to spiders scorpions whatever wherever you happen to live and whatever problems that your environment has you have to make those enclosures not only just the camera enclosure but the equipment enclosure has to make you have to make that secure yeah, and I've seen um, ants absolutely invade and just set up a whole colony inside of equipment enclosures. It's nasty. Um, all right, so secure your containers, folks, very tightly. Number seven. <laughs> so this was actually a extension mount, if we could call it that, um, <laughs> at a casino that I once visited. And wow. I felt that uh, this was kind of actually one of the first pictures that I took that I just, I had to save it because I just couldn't imagine. And I was going to use this in, and I have used this picture actually in a lot of my, uh, in a lot of my trainings that wow. I've done. Awesome. And is that um, obviously not a uh, wind rated at that, that, that distance hanging out there? <laughs> no, that has not been engineered by anybody with a, uh, with a degree. That's for sure. Yeah, it's funny. I, uh, I I frequently see poles, you know, with a lot of stuff hanging on them, and people don't haven't investigated the wind rating on the poles. So it's like a light pole in a suburban area or something. Right. Um, some of these some of these communities, and and that's a thing the industry tends to overlook. Like, oh, I'll just take power off the pole and mount it on there. But you should be aware that, you, that the wind rating on those poles uh, may take them down if you hang a pendant camera off there. Maybe more than that that pole's built for. Well, and it's not just the poles, it's any mounting structure, right? So if you look at trees, you know, trees sway and give, as you know, living in Hawaii, you know, those palm trees, they're meant to, uh, you know, to give as much as possible during the uh, larger weather events that you have. And so that will cause, you know, your cameras to shake, rattle and roll. Yeah, light poles, not a good idea. They're yeah. made for lights, not cameras. <laughs> right. Uh, what do we got next, Eric? So this was a uh, picture that was actually here locally in my area, and it seemed to be a, a mix of do-it-yourself type of uh, work. And, uh, you know, putting up, a, you know, mounting a two by four to mount a camera, I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah, I, um, I, think, I, I think a lot of times this is the, the maintenance guy from the facility, you know, like, hey, go, let's go get a camera on the parking lot or something, and they, they buy one and throw it up there. I don't know, it's, um, it's interesting, a lot of times when you see these sort of homemade uh, mounting ideas, um, you can tell they probably didn't talk to one of your consultants. <laughs> probably not, I'm hoping. <laughs> okay, Eric, what do we got next? So this is that uh, fish bowl. So oh. if you can see the uh, bottom of the bowl there is complete, or the dome, it's completely oh, wow. covered in water. Uh, it's about an inch and a half deep. Mm -hmm. And so this, uh, you know, this is a fail that that this directly results in 
not following the manufacturer's prescribed mounting to retain the IP67 rating. You know, if you drill through that outer, you know, that that case that dome casing for mounting, you are going to get water in it. You will fail that camera and that installation. Yeah, it happens quick in Hawaii. We get water from 360 degrees, like seriously. <laughs> I mean, blowing even upwards, you know, because of the wind. And right. uh, I've uh, I've I've been called out to places where they're like, we got this new system and it's not working and show up and it's all indoor cameras outside that are just flooded. It's ridiculous. You know, silicon caulking was made, was a, was a great improvement, but it just doesn't, uh, it yeah. just doesn't hold for any length of time. Ultimately right. it will fail. Yeah. Especially if, if you got a lot of weather variation, right. It just doesn't hold up. Right. Um, all right. What do we have to Eric? I'm not sure what number I lost track, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, this camera, <laughs> Somebody had, you know, really taken some initiative to use the uh, paint roller as a actual mounting arm, and uh, it it looks to me, it looked to me like a real camera, and the wiring was there, everything was there. So this is uh, just a, I don't know if it was a as a joke, but it was very interesting. Yeah, and it used the the. The, what is that about a one inch the screw in the bottom of the handle right to mount right. that down there i was wondering how he turned that onto there right let's it i can't really tell from the angle if it stuck out far enough to spin yeah i couldn't tell from the from the picture yeah amazing well you know sometimes you gotta you gotta figure out a mount interesting non-standard for sure i've no i've never seen ever seen have you ever seen another one of those <laughs> i've never seen another one of those but i have seen something very very close to that and I think it's coming up here in a second. Okay. Oh, there's its match. So nice. there's the paint, the paint can, the camera inside of the paint can. I really don't understand what they were trying to do as a sun shield or, or what, but, uh, but it matches the paint roller. So, Hey, have at it. I think maybe painting contractors sometimes get asked to mount the cameras and you know, uh you, you know what i mean like and uh so they're just doing their best i don't i don't do not it looked like there was a housing inside that can yeah it looked like a bullet camera inside the paint can ah interesting <laughs> I, 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 maybe someone tried to block it and throw the can over it or something who knows really uh, interesting no because no, it, it, it had, actually had it actually had yeah. the lip the 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 brow on it so i don't know yeah, it had to be mounted in the back too yeah so they had to bore a hole through that thing yeah that's just something else well you never know uh, what do we got next? So this is an interesting oh, one. Yeah. You know, it's a high voltage line coming in to, to this toolbox used as a junction box. And then the cameras mounted to that exactly where all the wiring went. I can't, I, I can't remember now. I can't really see it, but uh, it, the toolbox was an, you know, was one of those things I think where it was, you know, we have nothing, you know, we have nothing in our truck that can, uh, that can work for this. So we're going to use that. I would hope. I don't know what else somebody was thinking there. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad they didn't leave HV wide open, but it, and it's obviously been there long enough to have been painted. Yep. So, so who, who, who someone signed off on it, at least I, I'm, I'm guessing, or else it was a, a new install. They got painted up in that corner. And then, like you said, no, no enclosure available. Um, or it could have been a maintenance room and somebody, some maintenance guy was, you know, was making a joke, but either which way, uh, it had a camera mounted on it. So it hit the, uh, it hit one of the top, uh, one of the top ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, um, you would think, God, I don't want to surrender my toolbox, but, um, you know, when you're in a bind, uh, <laughs> you never know what you got to do. That, that's a, that's a pretty good, at least it's accessible by the way, you know, cause the lid just pops open. So, I mean, right. um, it's surely not going to hold up to UL, but you know, it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not, not a bad job all in all. <laughs> Uh, all right, what do we got next? So this is one of the clear plastic totes that you find at like Home Depot or somewhere of that nature. And there is everything in there from a network switch to, you know, two cameras on the outside of it. You know, this is used as a junction box. The nice thing is, is that it was clear that you could actually see if it was retaining water or not, I guess. Wow, and that's a, a coat, like a poncho? a tote, a tote, like oh, a tote. you know, okay. like a storage box. Oh, I got you. Okay, wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, I wonder how long that stays waterproof. Anyway, hard to say, right? Depends on. I guess it depends on the type of uh, of uh, clasp. 
Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, what, what, what else do we have over there? I think we got one or two left. That was it. Awesome. So what do you think, Chad, uh, the, the sort of the takeaway is from, from seeing, you know, things done, you know, not non-standard, let's just call it that. Um, is it, is it negligence? Is it, um, you know, what do you think drives uh, those types of things? Inexperience? I don't know. There's a few things I think come to some, mind. I think some of it is inexperience, but I also think that some of it is the way jobs are bid. When jobs are bid, wow. you're to be the lowest bidder, as you know, Andrew, you have to sometimes cut corners. You know, those installers, you know, the, 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 the salespeople that are making the, uh, the bids, you know, they want to bid 30 hours on the job. And your installers are saying, you know, it's going to take 50 hours. So they got to figure out where to cut 20 hours from. And unfortunately, those, short, those shortcuts sometimes can lead to this type of a problem. Um, the installers, I don't think, want to take it that way. But they feel they have to, to be able to get the job done under the time frame. Mm. Yeah, that's, um, I I, um, I mean, the, the low bid problems out there for the industry, right? There's always, the, there's companies that are larger with more overhead, and then there's the, the single guys. And I, I think there's a lot of states that aren't licensed. Is, uh, you're in Washington. Is there, there's a license required in Washington, correct? A low voltage yeah. yes, license there is. for commercial work, sure. So that's what we have in Hawaii as well. But I think there's a lot of right to work states or whatever they call them where there's no license required. So guys, you know, guys without much experience are out there installing stuff from Home Depot or whatever it may be, or Best Buy or something. Um, and, then, and then the standards fall off very quickly. I'm, I'm always sort of afraid that that hurts our industry overall because people see that and just think that's the way things are done. Uh, what's your take on that uh, as far as our, the perspective that the, you know, the people outside of our industry might have on our industry when they see, you know, a, cam a camera mounted on a paint roller, for example? <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of strange because sometimes I feel like our industry gets a bad reputation in regards to that. And some of that is the reason why why posting some of this, because if I can affect, um, you know, just a handful of installations out there or installers that are like, yeah, I really shouldn't do it that way because I've seen an example that doesn't it, that won't turn out very well. So and if I if they can correct that before they even do the installation, then. I've succeeded. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, last word for our audience. We got a minute or so left. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Just, uh, you know, keep following me on LinkedIn at the uh, pound CCTV fail and uh, feel free to connect to me. If you'd like to contact me, reach out. I'd like to, uh, you know, to talk to other people in, in the industry. Or if you see bad images, send them to him too. <laughs> yeah. I get a lot of donor images also. Awesome. Chad, thanks so much for your time today. I appreciate you being on. We'll talk again soon. Take care of yourself. Aloha. Thank you very much. Take care.